Ryan Murphy's 25-year career in Hollywood has been built around two foundational principles, a devotion to beauty and a belief in conflict. Pairing things, people, and ideas that shouldn't go together, and yet, when the alchemy is right, magically do. With his latest design project, a reimagining of a Richard Neutra house in Bel Air, Ryan relied on those two fundamental passions again. The result? A reinvention of what mid-century design could be today. Built by Neutra in 1955 for the Brown family, a doctor and his wife who loved to entertain, the Brown House invites guests in via an entry ramp framed by towering cantilevered bars. Inside, once passage has been made through a minimalist hallway of walnut paneling and terrazzo, one is catapulted into a tour de force living room, instantly recognizable for its floor-to-ceiling sliding glass doors. Supposedly the only double-wide living room Neutra ever made. Tom Ford, a friend of Ryan's, had famously bought this Neutra masterpiece in 1997, and with architect Ron Radziner, turned it into a new kind of mid-century classic. When Ryan purchased the jewel box in 2022, he decided the house needed a new big design swing, a la the one Ford gave it 20 years earlier. The first thing Ryan did was assemble a great team. Tim Wollaston, as project manager, supervised every detail of the transformation. The designer, Trevor Cheney. Ryan and Trevor hit upon an idea both instantly loved. Instead of a devotion to one mid-century style that had long gone out of fashion, why not invite objects and furniture in from other time periods, making the house a tribute to the best of design from the past 500 years was both challenging and exciting, and yes, modern. But there was another rule. The art had to be predominantly contemporary. And Ryan wanted some showstopper furniture pieces. Rick Owens and Michelle Lamy were the first artisans Ryan courted. They began making the centerpiece of the house, a monolithic gray alabaster dining table. Ryan has discovered that the only thing that truly interests him in a space is when things are in conflict. It's the same in storytelling. Born of discord, an evocative conversation is made. A Rick Owens stainless aluminum table from 2018, adorned with platinum Viennese secession candlesticks, for example, is highly unusual when placed near a Biedemeyer table besides the Jeff Koons Gazing Ball masterpiece from 2015. Yet both examples showcase the best boundary-pushing art and design of their times. For the interiors, Ryan thought of Kay Thompson and Funny Face, who famously yodeled, banish the black, burn the blue, and bury the beige. But his credo for the house was get rid of the brown. Every carpet, rug, and pony skin cushion was refreshed. Tobacco tones replaced by cool grays and shimmering silvers in mohair and cashmere. With everything cooler in tone and contrasting with the walnut paneling, the home began to look like a Roman apartment that Ryan once saw and often dreamt of. Black mosaic tile Ford used to dramatize the bathroom areas were restored to accentuate this luxurious, almost European feeling. And so another rule for the house was born. Let's add some Italian 1970s lighting and make the gardens look Roman. Enter landscape designer Scott Schrader. 
Scott's goal was to soften the parameters of the house by making everything all one tone and classical in structure, the opposite of traditional mid-century landscapes. Scott and Ryan's first collaboration had a singular obsession. The dining room has a rectangular window that looks like a still-life painting, waiting, wanting to come to life. Scott found an early 19th century Italian sculpture of Cupid. And once it was paired with boxwood forms, the window painting they had imagined appeared. The transformation of the Horizon Garden was just as disciplined and out of time. The idea was to float an urn fountain from 1650 in the center of the space and surround it with concrete benches from Belgium. A fake lawn was replaced by a creamy gravel Neutra himself was fond of, Del Rio. Trevor Cheney did what he does best, put things together that most people wouldn't. In the sitting room of the primary bedroom, for example, he arranged a suite of 1970s seating by Tobias Scarpa upholstered in rust velvet, a 1930s cabinet, a circa 1902 Tiffany lamp, bronze contemporary cocktail tables, and Ryan's collection of John Dupre silver. Art advisor Joe Shiftel reminded Ryan of a portrait he'd own of Gwyneth Paltrow in mid-talented Mr. Ripley pose by artist Robin F. Williams. Once it hung on an aubergine lacquered wall, everyone laughed. Was Gwyneth gasping at the combination of contrasting styles that somehow all worked together to tell a contemporary story? They decided she was. Other art abounded, and fun was found in placing paintings that Ryan and husband David Miller had acquired over the years in wild conflict and conversation with unexpected objects and antiques. A 1785 Jean-Honoré Fragonard portrait of Mademoiselle Marie Catherine Colomb as Venus looked perfect in the powder room, paired with a Harry Batoya sculpture. In the primary treehouse bedroom, nestled under a massive oak, a Lisa Yuskovich seduction tableau finally found a home above a deco daybed where the lovers in the painting could seemingly plop down for an inevitable tryst. In the den, Jamie Wyeth's Emperor of Chickens, where a young gentleman farmer referees a cockfight, is made even more whimsical by the placement of a 1980s Norwegian armchair in a strange pretzel shape. And in the kitchen, dining chairs by Donald Judd are paired with a 19th century garden table. And above them, fittingly, an 80s Andy Warhol tribute to the power of symbolism. This kitchen, known as the Coffee Clutch, is connected to a chef's kitchen below and is united by a one-of-a-kind restored dumbwaiter, its own work of odd art. Other strange bedfellows flourish. In the home office, guarded by a Saint Sebastian by Nicholas Party, a 1974 monumental Nakashima desk made for Governor and Mrs. Rockefeller glows Ligurian when paired with a 1984 Joe Good cloud painting and a sculptural figure from Mark Ryden's Meat Show series. Another favorite odd couple turned out to be a painting of the infamous Alive plane crash, painted by Jamie and Giuliano Villani in 2014. And in front of it, a German circa 1820 jewelry box, held aloft by Atlas. In the area of the house called the ladies' closet, the combination felt bracing. Suddenly, the estate was developing a sense of whimsy and humor.
the only object in the entire house from the mid-century it was born in, is a bronze male bust. It sits center stage on an Italian table from 1975. And near it, a pair of 18th century Louis XV celestial and terrestrial globes. A reminder that the world keeps spinning forward and no style ever stays in style forever. <laughs>